So to start permanently attaching the table to my drill press, I aligned the drill press so that the drill goes perfectly through the center of the table that's already there and locked everything in place, put my table in there, and then made sure it was going to the center of that cutout I'd already made. Once I had that, I transferred to the back about a three and a half inch by a three and a half inch square. I drilled out the corners and then I could jigsaw out that center. And that's just so that when you're drilling um, continuously, you have that throwaway piece. But if that underneath that throwaway piece starts getting marred up, your drill bits will get caught in that as well. So by removing it, you just have a nice open void at the bottom of your table and you don't have to worry about it. So then I just jigsawed out that square and then I could start figuring out where I want to put the T-track on the bottom of this piece. Just about ready to mount this to my table. And if you're one of those people whose drill press table has two parallel lines, um, you're going to have more versatility in your table. Because what's going to happen is, is I'm going to put a slot on the bottom with a T-track going across the whole piece. That will enable me to slide this whole table back and forth and use um, the jig at the end. Now the other thing that would be nice to be able to do is move the table forward and back. So if you have those parallel slots, you with one T-track you could slide it this way, but also then you could slide the whole table in your parallel slots, which would be really nice. So since I don't have that, I'm going to cut my losses and I'm going to drill my T-track going right through the center of these two holes. So it will be stationary in one spot, and if I ever need to move it, I could transfer that T-track and the same mechanism to these front holes so that it will bypass my column and I could slide it back and forth. This is going to be my normal everyday position. You could see what I did was I aligned this so that my two vertical holes are going center through my point, and then this X comes off at even spacing. And it's probably going to be a little hard to see, but I mark center. I mark center of this hole as well as center of that hole. So if I want, I'll be able to undo the knob that's going to hold this in place and then slide this forward. And my two marks are going to line up in those new holes. So that way I can then slide this whole thing on that T-track over. This is the mini T-Track I've been waiting on and this is very convenient stuff but it's one of those things that I think is ridiculously expensive for what it is. All of this together was these four pieces was over $30 and that's just basically what happens when something becomes popular. They can charge you for it. So I didn't actually know there was two different sizes T-Track. This is mini so it's only three eighths of an inch thick. Um, this is what regular T-Track looks like. It's a half inch thick. So the mini is convenient on these pieces where you're going to be cutting a dado into them. It just takes less material out of your piece. I actually don't think the prices are that different. So in order to get this shipped as fast as possible, I ended up buying 24 inch pieces because those for some reason ship faster than the longer pieces, which means on my table, I'm gonna have to cut and join pieces together, but that I don't think that will be an issue. So the nice thing about this T-Track is, now I have a ton of hardware for this stuff. They use these T-bolts that slide in, and then you can use these knobs to um, make all sorts of attachments and uses for these. But they also accept quarter inch hex head. So if you don't have T-bolts, which I think they sell these at some of the bigger hardware stores, but not all the sizes, you could always use hex head nuts and um, get the same result. So in order to cut these, I put a three quarter inch dado in my table saw. And the nice thing about metal is it's gonna be exactly three quarters of an inch. So you could use your three quarter inch stack and then I just drew a line over where I made those marks on the bottom of my table. So they were kind of centered over those slots. And then I just raised the blade to the height of that T-track and slid my whole assembly over that dado blade. I got a nice clean dado because this surface is really flat. 
Um, in order to cut this T-track, I ended up using a hacksaw. I didn't film a ton of that because it's kind of a slow process. So I cut most of this upside down so I didn't mar the top of the finish. And um, it's pretty easy to hacksaw through. This hacksaw is missing a bunch of teeth, which is why it's taking forever. And then I just went through and added all the T-track to the bottom. It ended up being... Um, three pieces because I did two ends short and one long piece in the middle. I attached it with three quarter inch wood screws because my base is so thick I was able to use three quarter inch but on thinner jigs you might have to get um, half inch screws. So in the example in the book their T-track on the, t the table top which is what is going to enable you to move the fence back and forth but also enable you to put hold downs in the front as well. Um, flanks, the replaceable inset opening. Now because I already glued my angles in place, I wouldn't be able to turn my knobs if I did that. However, I do like the idea of these two sides being metal. It just reduces this, um, the chances of all the wood swelling and making this insert hard to take in and out. So I think what I'm going to do is, follow the line like they did in the book, but then just put a spacer on the back of this so I'll be able to spin my knobs. So with my dado already set up, adding all the T-track is the exact same process. You just cut a dado, trim that track to fit, and then screw it in place. So I just lined it up with the marks that I made on the back side of the table and slid this through. It wasn't symmetrical, so I couldn't flip it and do both at the same time um, because the one side's a little bit longer than the other because I added that outer face frame. So I had to adjust the fence and, and do the second one. So those T-bolts are actually 5 16 they're not quarter inch like um, the hex heads I showed earlier. So um, I drilled 5 16 inch holes into here and I just eyed over the T-track where to place those holes and drilled them on my drill press because you want those to be really square so that everything slides smoothly. If those holes are, are even a little crooked, these components won't slide nicely on the top of that table. In the previous video, I had already cut the dado for the T-track on the fence, so now I'm just attaching it. And the reason I did this piecemeal is because I was trying to make that 24-inch track go as far as possible. Um, if I miscut this stuff, I would have ended up having to order more. So I just kind of added the track as I moved along, utilizing the small cutoff ends of all the pieces. And then I finished everything out by adding the T-track to the top of that, of that drill press table as well. After that I dry fit everything on the top of the table and it was a tight fit with the throat of um, with the table and then that that piece which I'm calling the throat sticking out the bottom getting those knobs to fit the knobs were a little wide and then once that was in place I put the fence on and tested that out as well. So it's probably going to be hard to see but the clearances under here are really tight I might actually shave end up shave shaving off the edges of these knobs so that um, they don't hit this, which is what they were doing when I was trying to put them on. But you could see now that if I have that, I could swap them and put them up here and then be able to slide this. Now, if you loosen these, you do have a little bit of movement. I would say a little over an inch. Finishing up the end boring jig was really easy. I made the two slots symmetrical and I came in about 10 inches from the bottom as well as uh, 10 inches, 2 inches from the bottom as well as 2 inches from the top and I made two slots. And this is getting that thicker track because I ran out of the mini track. So these dados are half inch, not 3 eighths of an inch. And that track was 48 inches and I stole it from my crosscut sled, so I just cut it in half and then screwed it in place. So I made marks on that vertical fence where my opening is to add that tenon, and then in order to get the proper depth off on the back side of that vertical jig to put a dado in order to receive the tenon, I used, um, I used the ruler on my square to mark the depth of um, the thickness of that top, transferred that to the back side of my piece, 
can transfer that first mark and then I measured down to the bottom of that opening and transferred that mark as well so I had a perfectly aligned slot for the dado then in order to cut this dado um, it's half inch plywood so I'm cutting a half inch dado and I'm just gonna so I'm just gonna plop the whole jig onto my table saw while the blade is running and I have two pieces of tape marking when to put it down and when to pick it up and I'm just gonna slide it over and this is a pretty deep dado it's gonna be a little over an inch so I do it in multiple passes and I just keep riding that over there and raising the blade in order to get a nice centered groove once I had that groove I used the width of it to measure how much plywood I needed um, I measured the depth of the groove as well as the depth on the already existing jig in order to get a total depth um, on the whole piece once again using the depth gauge on my square and I just cut that little half inch piece of plywood down to size once I had my plywood I went through and I round uh, squared off the corners that are left by the the circular blade this is pretty easy to do an MDF it, it, it breaks apart pretty easily you just want to be careful with that top side edge because it's going to be really fragile until you glue that that piece of plywood in there now that I had the groove I wanted to get, make sure it was going to fit exactly so I marked it on the edge and then I put it into the jig and marked it as well and the space between the two marks I trimmed off which was only about an eighth of an inch so that way when I slid it in there it fit in there perfectly I also did not want to wait for wood glue to dry on this so I ended up using a uh, a bit of epoxy to glue that that tenon into place and because that dado is so so um, deep it was easy to square this up it pretty much stayed square on its own then for the fence on the vertical jig I'm just adding a little slab of wood on top um, I just clamped it in place and screwed it and if it ends up working and being square I'll end up gluing it in place and this is just so that 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 um, piece will stay square and, and slide nicely along along the top of that vertical jig once I had that piece in place I could then have that jig just resting right on top of my fence and I could mark the holes for the hardware to go so that this could be tightened to that t-track as well same process as the original fence um, I just marked those hold drilled five six inch holes and then could mount that trap so this piece slides in and out of there really nicely it's a very nice fit and every time I've taken it in and out which are now which now is about a dozen times it's still perfectly square so I'm really happy with the way that turned out and then I could use the knobs to attach that vertical fence and then this is testing out um, moving it in order to get the end boring jig in place and after this little bit where I show moving it to the front in order to get everything to work I, I sat on it for a couple days and figured out a way to do this much easier which is something I should have realized playing around with moving this around um, in order to attach that vertical jig and right now like I said before I have to lift it and transfer it to the front holes in order to clear my column and be able to slide this all the way over you end up having to slide it so this edge is then flush with your table edge and that works but I think what um, and this was a minor oversight on my point part when I was making it I think I need about three inches of clearance to clear this column and when I moved it to the front I noticed there's a lot more play in this even with these slotted holes than I originally assumed so I think what might happen is since these holes are a little over three inches if I make a new dado and have my track centered over this back edge I should be able to slide this whole table up enough to then be able to push it to the side which means I pretty much will never have to take this off it will just be much more convenient so I'm going to try that um, another thing you could do is to turn this into sort of an XY access sort of system and Stumpy Nubs has a video on his channel where he does that but that pretty much has to entail an extra table platform and this table would move in that platform which is then attached to your table table and I just don't think aside from moving this for vertical end boring that I need to shift this table around a ton for my purposes mainly because the only time I really moved my table a ton was because the table that comes with it is so small I was always moving it in order to get 
um, a better surface area for drilling. But since this table's so wide, like I said, I just don't see myself moving it around as much. And I think if I can move it up far enough to be able to slide it to the side, that will suit most of my purposes. But if you want something that's more versatile for moving forward and back as well as side to side, um, you could check out that video on his channel. Since I already showed you how to cut that original groove, I'm not going to re-show it because it's the same process. I'm literally just moving it back by only about three quarters of an inch. So I'm centering my groove over the back edge of those um, hash marks and cutting a new groove. And I don't know if I show it, but I do end up filling the previous groove with a piece of three H inch scrap. There it is, the filler in there. That was easy. I have a ton of scrap already. It's something practically the exact same size for that. And then um, this is testing, testing the new, the new placement of that T-track on the table. Already a bonus is because since those holes are now further away from that center, center throat there, um, it was much easier to get the knobs on in place. And then loosening it, you could see it slides much further forward. And um, once I got the knobs out of the way, it now clears the column. So that adjustment saved me a ton of time. And then you could see from the bottom how that system works. So you could slide it all the way over to the end of that table. And then these knobs are still a little big. They keep getting caught on those flanges. So I might still trim them down so that everything moves a little slower, but it does easily move all the way over both ways and then back in place. And then I was just testing out the new placement with adding the end boring jig to see how that would work as well. And the end boring jig works really well. Um, I'm not gonna do a ton of testing with this because the I feel like the drill press table is pretty straightforward. It just makes drilling holes easier. Um, applications are going to be easier. The end boring jig works. There's not a lot of flex in it and that's all I could really ask for. So I'm pretty happy with it. And um, you'll notice my table's moving around. Uh, the drill press itself is moving around a ton. That's just because my floor is not even. So now that I have this all set up, I'll put some spacers underneath of it and it won't, it won't wiggle around as much. The last little part of this is I'm going to make a stop lock that will go on that track on my fence. And I already had a scrap piece of milled um, maple. I'm just going to cut it into a little bit of an enlarged block. It's not going to be as high as the fence on the, the table. So it's like two and seven eighths and then about an inch and a half wide. I'm going to put a dado in the back of the stop with a little tab in it so that it stays square in my fence. So I just gauged it up against that T-track in order to see where to place that groove. I don't want this riding on the base of the of the table saw of the t drill press table because it will catch and ride. So I lifted it up a little bit, made that mark. I cut it out on my radio alarm saw because it's a very small dado. And then I drilled a 5 16th inch hole right through the center of the block. I had a perfect piece of scrap laying around that's actually oak that fit into that groove. So I'm going to epoxy that into the groove so I don't have to wait for it to dry and then drill that hole again so it goes all the way through that little tab. I didn't film it, but I used a handsaw to then cut out that recess. I did it this way so you still have the meat of that wood in the piece instead of gluing in two separate pieces. So that T-track, uh, the T-bolt now fits in there and this screws right onto the track. It's really easy to move around and use as a stop. So I am going to put a finish on this, um, mainly be, especially on the tabletop. It will just get dinged up over time. That MDF has a tendency to kind of flake off if it doesn't have a coating on it. I usually prefer oil-based coatings, but I had this water-based poly acrylic laying around from another project, and I don't use it a lot on a ton of stuff, so I decided to put that on, and um, I coated everything. So I took all the pieces apart, coated the... So this is that finished drill press jig. Uh, it has all the exposed wooden parts have three coats of uh, that water-based poly on them. The table has four. Hold downs I'm going to be using for this are these Rockler hold downs, and I'm going to be using them in my vertical jig as well. However, this T track I ordered quite a long time ago, and the opening does not receive these T bolts that I have um, in abundance. So, in order to make this work with the whole system, all I do for these is you can barely even tell, but I just ground down the side of these so that they now fit in this track. Um, the regular T-bolts, they're just wide enough to not fit.
but I could also, if, um, the reason I'm doing that is because I have these knobs, which, um, aren't quarter inch knobs, but if you had quarter inch knobs, you could just use all of this with quarter inch bolts, and those fit in both of these without grinding. The thing I didn't show in the original video is, um, for the top side of this, I put a skim coat of epoxy on it, just because this is, I don't want this to get dinged up, and I wanted to reinforce it because that tenon is so close to the edge. I didn't want it to crack over time. So now this is a very, very smooth surface. You can see that that fence now slides nicely on there. And this, um, I'm probably going to not have on there at all times. I'm probably going to store that on my shelf over here, and when I need it, put it on there, just because it's so heavy and it, it kind of sticks out in the back over here. It's just going to get in the way. I'm most likely only going to use it a dozen or so times a year, so there's really no point in having it up there. If over time, I actually just checked this again, and this is still perfectly square. If over time, if this starts to uh, sag or warp, I'll add a 45 here and potentially um, permanently attach it, but for now, I don't think I need it. Like I said before, what I'm going to be using in here are these Rockler clamps. And that is because I've just built so many jigs over the years that I have a bunch of these knobs and these T-bolts that slide in there really nicely. The last things to address, and you could probably see it sticking out the front here, is I used to use a vice grip to raise and lower this because it did not come with a handle. Now a lot of these systems, when you make one of these tables, sometimes the top part um, impedes the turning of the handle. That's really going to be based on your drill press and what you have. Since I didn't have one, um, I was using this vice grip to turn, to turn this, that would still work. But as you can see, I had some old gears and I've slowly been trying to turn them into mitered gears and I could set up a system in order to turn this whole thing through the front. This is about 75% done and it actually lowers really well. So I've gotten it to lower very well because gravity is on my side. It's the raising that's up with all the added weight, which is another reason why I don't want to have that uh, vertical panel on there, which is turning into a little bit of a problem. I think I just need some stop collars in order to get that threaded rod set in place so it can't move around and the gears can't skip on me. Um, if I get this to work, I'll upload that video sometime in the next week or so once the parts come in and you'll be able to mount something like this to your drill press table and avoid having to worry about messing with adjusting the handle on the back. Um, if I end up not getting this work to work, you will know because I just won't upload that video. And I'll just probably put this vice grip back there and, and, do, it the, and do it the way I had it before.